Hey. Hi, guys. Hey. You know. You know. Do we know? What, what do we know? I don't fucking know. Anyways, All hey, right. guys. Welcome back. We are we are starting a cult. I'm Jake. That's Grant. Fuck you, dude. That's Grant. I'm Jake. And we are starting a cult. Mitch is also here. Yeah, he's here. He's chilling. Um, There's some sort of noise happening outside. What's it's that? a YouTube ad, I believe. God damn it. Um, I will start this by saying um, happy Veterans Day to any veterans and or Call of Duty players. Yeah, thanks for doing that. You guys have all earned your uh, badges for the Veterans Day. And, uh, you know, good for you. Sometimes you get like 10% off at a restaurant. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Applebee's will give you like a free lava cake or something. Not that you'd ever want to go to that fucking shithole, but you know, hey, who am I? I uh, can't defend it. Uh, yeah, no can't defend it. No one's ever been happy about an Applebee's unless you're talking about their drink menu. I've been to an Applebee's exactly one time. And it wasn't worth the second trip. It was so. a reason I didn't go back. But we're back. We are continuing our series on the West Memphis 3, the Weapons of Mass Destruction. Um, we're going to be doing part three today. Obviously, if you listen to the show, you saw that we took a break last week and did a little bit of a, uh, news. a puffer episode. We did news. Um, so we did some news. You can catch up on that if you haven't listened yet. I'm sure a lot of news has happened in the couple of days since we've done that. Yeah, and on our news, we really don't cover the news. Oh, we, I will we say. We just cover like, random stuff that you might not have heard of. Just a little tidbit, just a quick little selling before we jump in. Um, Pennsylvania. Their uh, vote, they voted in a man that is dead. He is dead. He cannot How hold office. How dumb is that? He's dead. He's fucking dead. Um, but with that being said, look that up if you're interested. They, uh, One of the district congressional members that was running, he died in October and he won the election. So And they, quote, couldn't get him off the ballot. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> fucking stupid. With that. that lovely information, eighty-five percent in, of the vote. Why don't we jump right into the part three of our series? West Memphis three. Yeah. The West Memphis three squared. How about that? Three cubed. Oh yeah. Fuck you. Um, All right. Well. But I get you. I get this your point. math metaphor is very. It helps if you're you good know at math, you know? I don't even know if it makes sense. I know math terminology, but I really had to sit down and think about math before yeah. I do it. West Memphis 3, PT3. Yeah. That's and without further says. ado, I say, why don't we uh, check it out? Let's just do it. We left off last time with the police completely buying into the idea that Damian Eccles, Jason Baldwin, and Jesse Kelly were to blame for the brutal murders of Christopher Byers, Michael Moore, and Stevie Branch. All right, they're all Correct. they just they just think that now. That's exactly what happened and that's the yeah. end of the episode. Exactly. Isn't it crazy that they're out now? All right, so Damien, uh, of course, uh, he was thought to be the leader of all this, so the police they were gunning for him, you know, more than anyone. They were they were going for this kid Damien. They they believed uh, the best way to get to Damien would be to go through this unfortunate and not so bright guy, uh, Jesse Miss Kelly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, the two uh, barely knew each other. They like it helps. they like didn't even know <laughs> each other. You know, when you're trying to get answers in an investigation, that certainly does help. Yeah, just ask complete strangers and see what they say. All right, so in order for the police to know exactly where Jesse was at the time that they were going to come and pick him up for questioning, they told Vicky, you remember the waitress who uh, straight up lied about the boys to the police? Sexy waitress. And she was like drinking multiple bottles of wild turkey. And she... Uh, yeah. Yep, yep. She's got a talkative young son. Anyway, uh, so they told Vicky uh, to ask him to sleep on her couch by claiming that there was a prowler seen lurking around town that night. So this 30-year-old woman was going to ask a 17-year-old young boy to come protect her house. Smart. By just sleeping on the couch. Kyle Rittenhouse style. Not you know? weird at all. <laughs> Wait, Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> yeah, he's getting involved in a problem that's not his and do, protecting things that aren't his. Yeah, but you all know. All the sake of freedom. One of the bigger differences is uh, Vicky actually asked him to come protect Hell, her. Yeah, fair. You know what I mean? Valid point. Yeah, Kyle. God damn it. What an uh, idiot. What a weird guy. Remember when he cried? What a doofus. That was fun. All right, uh, you know, protector, super normal. Uh, at nine o'clock the next morning, though, because he did it, you know, uh, Jesse went over. He was like, "I'll protect you, whatever." But nine o'clock the next morning, Jesse's father knocked on Vicky's trailer door, 
and he told Jesse that the police wanted to ask him some questions. Jesse, we need to ask the police or get the, <laughs> the damn it, the police. Never mind. God, no, do the bit. No, you've it's committed over. to the bit. I committed too far into the, the wrong The longer you don't sentence. do the bit, the worse this will be. No, it's not happening. Okay, the bit's right. over. It ended. It fizzled out in its own sentence structure because I said it all wrong. All right, well, Jesse's father, he came to Vicky's trailer. He was like, God damn it, Jesse, they want to talk to you. The police, that is. Uh, Jesse was apprehensive at first, but then after being told by his father that it was all right, he complied. Jesse's girl? No, Jesse's father. His father beat the shit out of him all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Not not the girl. Uh, So, yeah, he complied. His dad was like, yeah, it'll be all right. So he's like, all right, sure. The police then drove Jesse and his father over to the station and made sure to mention, you know, out loud, that the reward for information regarding the three uh, dead young boys, it was at about 35K. 35? That's nothing small, you know, especially back then, especially for these very poor people. Shit, 35,000, even if you'd... Even if you make six figures, no one's going to say no to a free 35000 like, why wouldn't I take that money? Absolutely. That's fucking play money. Yeah. No doubt uh, uh, priming Jesse, you know, the, this uh, this mention of the money, priming him to, you know, be willing to talk, you know, truth or lie. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Facts be damned. Facts be damned. I'm getting that 35000 from the state. Right? Incorrect. Okay, well... Incorrect. No, he didn't get the money. You are right in saying that it's not right. So the first thing that police did when Jesse got to the station, they hooked him up to a lie detector. We know how trustworthy right. those are. <laughs> yeah, and we know how trustworthy the guy who's running it is, based on uh, what I said, I think, episode two. We learned Something all like about uh, Travis Walton. You know, we know yeah. what fucking lie detector tests are like. No, that's true. And uh, it didn't help that Detective Durham uh, had no idea what he was fucking doing. Uh, yeah, again, the same guy who uh, questioned Damien some time before and released a very vague and accusatory report that was one page basically saying this guy did it. Ah, yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, he asked Jesse if he knew who killed the boys and if he'd done drugs and if he had killed the boys, you know, etc. on and on like that. Uh, Jesse responded no to every single one of these questions and all that Durham had to say in his report that it's he was lying that's all it said liar he lied about everything so said durham uh seems every uh you know every time durham conducts one of these tests uh he got out of it what he wanted you know yeah preconceived notions there he had in a other plan words, and he got it he got it achieved yeah, durham didn't know what the fuck he was doing and this was proven in court later actually uh because uh, the results of this line of questioning, they were actually recorded, unlike the one he did with Damien previous. Uh-huh. So the results of this were recorded, and uh, Jesse's lawyers gave the results to an actual lie detector specialist, like a polygraph dude from like the FBI. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> there's like almost none of the summations made by Durham were accurate. None, you say. Like, the only thing that Jesse was lying about was when he was asked if he'd done drugs. Because he was, uh... You remember he was, like, huffing paint and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elmer's glue. Yeah, but that was the only thing he lied about. Uh, theoretically. Anyway, uh, let's see. Anyway, let's get back to Jesse. We have, uh... We've already covered the fact that Jesse wasn't the brightest. And that being the case, he, uh... He asked what the machine that they were hooking him up to did... So the polygraph and the cops told Jesse that the polygraph was going to read his mind Whoa. And, t- and tell them if he was lying to them, which Jesse like wholeheartedly believed. So when police told him that the machine said that his brain was lying, he believed that too. Oh. <laughs> Even though he was like, no, I'm telling the truth. Why is, why is my brain lying about it? Why would it do that, man? Yeah, it's a very, very, it's a conundrum for sure. Uh, th- this is where the, the groundwork for, you know, a false uh, confession is being, uh, is starting to take form. All right, so Jesse, he trusts the police and is being told by them that he can't even trust his own mind mm-hmm. to tell the truth. So he's like, all right, anything goes, basically. 
Anything goes coming in yep. the window. <laughs> coming in the window. Uh, this polygraph interrogation, it lasted two hours. Uh, after which, Jesse was led into a room where Gary Gitchell. He was led into a room full of mousetraps. And they had to navigate the entire room to get to the cheese. It was like a really weird witch trial. It's like if you can manage to get to the other side of this room without being snipped by one of these traps, you're a witch. You can you can have the cheese. You can have the cheese, but we're going to prosecute you the, for no, murder. No, no, no. The cheese is the death sentence. All right. Yeah, it's that simple. It's just they call so it was it the like cheese. a huge, elaborate test. But the real test is whether or not you go in the room. Yeah, it's like, are you going to die? Because I might kill you. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Gary Gitchell's there. He's the head investigator. He's uh, this is this is where it's going to get bad. All right. So. Oh, this. this oh, is this where... is where it gets bad. It not wasn't the bad three already. Dead young men. There's corpses and there's collusion <laughs> and there's problems, but now we're hitting to the problem. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse was asked if he knew anything about the murders and if he knew who had committed them. You know, he was just like, just tell us straight out, Jesse, come on. Uh, And Jesse said to them that he had a friend who had heard that it was Damien and Jason. And that's what he heard, so that's all he knew about the case. He told the police that that's all he knew. So, what do the police do with this, you know? What, What can you do with that if that's all you got? They began giving him more and more information about the case. Uh-oh. Extremely specific things, like that the boys were tied up with their own shoelaces, that one of the boys uh, had missing testicles, and his penis was skinned. Testicle. You know, uh, just extremely specific and gruesome details, right? Um, they would then have Jesse repeat those details back to them in the context of Damien and Jason being the perpetrators. I'm pretty certain that's not how interviews are supposed to go in not these scenarios. All, no, I'm After, no cop. Yeah. After this went on for a while uh, and a full story was being formed, that's when the threats kind of began. They were telling Jesse that it was either he was either with the police or he was with Damien and Jason. And the gruesome details that he learned about the case and the police threateningly pushing him, you know, to give them something to work with, uh, Jesse just started to say shit. Uh-huh. Like, he was he was pretty scared. Uh, he told... What did he do? He told the police that they, uh, they met up in the woods every Wednesday for satanic meetings. He's including himself in this. That's a weird. That's a weird <laughs> power like, move. He's like, uh, yeah. So we would meet I every Wednesday uh, for satanic meetings. I'm there all the time, uh, man. I'm always there. I swear, every yeah. Thursday, I'm always there. <laughs> he was telling all these stories about like briefcases full of drugs that they were peddling and shit. Which is like, okay, you guys are the poorest fucking kids in town, and you're selling drugs. Yeah, and you're not making money. Like, no. how are you not? <laughs> Like that, okay. Anyway, yeah, he was just like, we have all these, like, briefcases full of drugs, and uh, we, like, kill dogs and eat them and, like, other pets like, oh. all the time. Really? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. So he was just, like, saying shit. He was freaked out. And uh, as Jesse, you know, told these things to the police, they were kind of making a narrative out of it and, like, feeding that to him to then tell back to them as well. All right, all right. So, you know, he's, they're just like, so this happened and this. So tell me what happened. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, yeah. They then brought out the crime scene photos, which are pretty fucking vile. Like, have you seen those? Yeah. Like, the pictures I, of the bodies? I have, and they are, uh, they're not the most disturbing ones we've covered, but they're pretty fucking... It's a distorted yeah. young boy's yeah. corpses. Especially putting into perspective that these are, like, children, preteens at most. Um, it's, uh... Yeah, it's pretty fucking it's bad. It's pretty bad. Pretty I'd bad. say it's not good. You know, I don't recommend uh, it. You can look it up if you want, but yeah, I don't recommend it. I don't re- Take our word for it. It's anyway. Just, you know what it is. <laughs> the police put these photos in front of uh, this, this very not-so-bright 17-year-old child that they were grilling about a triple murder. Ah, uh, yeah. So, you know, and that, uh, that scared Jesse a little more. He got a little emotional. Um, and one final... And seemingly, like, random and unsettling thing that the police did. You remember, like, Vicky's son, Aaron, that was, like, just saying a bunch of shit? Oh, police, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. he was being grilled by the police, too, but yes, he, they were, yeah. like, being nice by giving him fucking Snickers bars and shit. Uh-huh. 
Um, the eight year old who was, you know, he was being rigorously questioned by the by the police and everything. And uh, you know what? A lot of his interview was recorded, and the police isolated a single sentence that the eight year old uttered over the po- over the course of like many many hours of being interviewed. Uh-huh. They isolated one thing. And they played the recording of that eight-year-old child saying it. It's just him going like, well, and then just cuts. <laughs> oh, so, well, the bodies, shit. so the bodies were in a well. You say, no, that's not what he's saying. Listen to the recording. Listen to this recording. Well, <laughs> it's right there, clear as day. What more do you want? He said it. He said, well. Uh, no, it was, it was Aaron in his young eight-year-old boy voice saying, no one knows what happened to me. <laughs> and they didn't tell Jesse who like that was or like in what context. He was yeah. just like, you know, it's, it's for him to picture like, oh, this is the victims. Jesse. Saying this. So it's I a have ghost. To, we recorded I have to try. This. We recorded this poltergeist of the child telling us this. <laughs> so they got him for like a spirit box. Yeah, he's like, what? Shit. Fuck, man, what? It's like a ghost adventures when it's like, wait, did you hear that? It sounds like he said large extra cheese and it's just like they play the sound it's like <laughs> if you slow like, it down i don't know about that if you slow it see spirits talk at about a thousand times faster than we do so when you slow it down he's saying he would like a big mac like, what <laughs> no like, okay why is everyone ordering food through like spiritual dimensions oh aaron he died in a drive through he, he never got. <laughs> he just order. really wanted those McNuggets. That's his unfinished business. He needs that order. He paid already. Yeah. He didn't get the food though. The only thing is, it's it was just a, it was a discontinued item. We oh can't my. lay him to rest. He, we got to bring the McRib back. That's why it keeps coming back, dude. People keep fucking dying on McRibs, and they the ghosts. And now are it's haunting. the last chance for the people who died trying to get McRibs to find happiness. If you die on this round this of the, the McRib, last time. you're gonna be here for a while. I'll tell you that you're gonna be it's here. Not for good. A while. It's not good. Probably about two years. Uh, that's my guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe like a year. They'll bring it back. Whatever. Literally before the year 2025, it's going to be back at yeah. least once. Yeah. The McRib is back. Anyway, so this is very traumatizing for Jesse. Because <laughs> they're just like, you're going to fucking, like, you're doing all this crazy shit. Oh, my God, you're going to prison for sure, unless you're with us. And they play him this, like, disembodied eight-year-old fucking thing, says nobody knows what happened to me. Jesse was obviously, like, insanely scared and traumatized. Oh, yeah, fair right? enough. And he just wanted to be done with the whole thing and just, like, go home. But this is when the police decide to start recording the conversation. Oh. So you see what they did there? They, oh, they laid the groundwork, got the story straight, you know, and it's like, all right, start at the beginning. Smart business. Smart yeah. business. Yeah. So, uh, again, Jesse isn't that bright. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, he isn't that bright. Uh, so even after talking for hours and hours of just, just going over the story over and over again, getting all the details, um, it was all just spoon fed to him. He still couldn't get it right. Damn. So like the confession is littered with just like contradictions. Uh-huh. Um, and on tape, you can hear the police correcting Jesse's telling of the story. Like he's, he was just like, yeah, me, Damien and Jason, we met up at the woods at like 9 AM that day. And, uh, we, we had already planned to kill the boys and, uh, you know, uh, they actually were dead by noon. Oh, jeez. Which is obviously not true because they were seen, like, around town by multiple people all the way up until sundown that day. So police said, no, it was later, right? And Jesse's like, oh, yeah, it was around, like, 5 that afternoon, but that still didn't add up. So they were just like, okay, well, you, maybe it was a little later, right? And he's like, yeah, it was around 7 or 8. And that's like what midnight. Gitchell's just like, oh, that makes sense. Believe it or not, it was, like, the next day. All right, it, it's, it, that's how fucking crazy They're still this alive. Go check their rooms. This shit hasn't happened yet. I'm talking about what I'm going to do. Good Lord. So, yeah, on tape, you can hear police, like, nudging him into things that fit their narrative. All right. Um, Jesse also positions himself within the story as the guy to corral any kids who tried to run off during the alleged beating portion of the crime. What a fucking job He's to like, give yourself. It was just, It was just my job to, like... He literally said, he was just like, all right, uh, yeah, Michael Moore, he actually got away 
at one point, and I chased him and like brought it back. Yeah, but Michael Moore needs to stop getting away with everything <laughs> he's getting away with. Yeah, that one. Yeah, but uh, young young man, he uh, yeah. So he ran away when uh, Jason and Damien were allegedly like beating up the other children. And Jesse said, yeah, I went and chased him. I got him back, brought him back to the boys. And <laughs> the detail, this detail of the like super fabricated story that Jesse Miss Kelly got wrapped up in, that was going to be the reason he went to jail. Because he was just like, yeah, I was the guy helping them. What he didn't moron. even have to place himself in the story, but he did. <laughs> what a fucking um, moron. Uh, so, um... That's when fitting in, you're trying to fit in, goes too far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's see. Uh, the police told him that... Uh, wait. The police told him if he told the truth, he'd be able to go home. But guess what? That uh, that night that he spent in on Vicky's couch was the last night he would sleep outside of a jail cell for the next 19 years. Oh, God. <laughs> Is it that? fucking crazy yeah that's not good uh but yeah even though jesse was like yeah i helped him out he was like yeah i i left before they killed him though they were all alive when i left I just like, round them up. it's like what a fucking stupid <laughs> stupid detail we were good trying Lord. to play duck duck goose and like it wasn't happening so i just left and then they killed him yeah <laughs> so yeah he slept on vicky's couch last time he's gonna sleep outside of a jail cell for 19 years so after the interrogation that day, uh, Jesse was led to a jail cell where he like fully expected to just be picked up by his dad uh -huh. whenever he could come get him. Uh, and this was after 11 hours of being questioned. God damn. 11 hours. It's a lot of questioning. It's a lot of questions. For a guy that knew nothing. He was probably just going over the same story for hours and hours, and he still fucked it up. I picture it as a... Do you remember the Simpsons episode where they go into witness protection? Oh, yeah. And yeah, he's yeah. Mr. Thompson. And they're like, when I say Mr. Thompson, you say, hello. He's like, how are you doing, Mr. Thompson? And he just cannot grasp it. I think he's talking <laughs> to you. That's like how, what the vibe I'm getting from Jesse. Is they're like, you killed them, right? And he's like, what? Who? Who? <laughs> and then finally they're like, just say Jesse. Look at me. Tell me. I murdered those three kids. He's like, okay, uh, yeah, I murdered uh, three kids. Can I go home now? Am I, is my good? <laughs> Am I done? Yeah, he's a bit of a Homer Simpson type, but just not as far lovable. less charming and lovable. Yeah. Uh, so police, they now had what they saw as enough evidence to get a warrant for the arrest of Damien and Jason. Uh oh. So at nine o'clock that night, same day, they acquired a warrant. And uh, went and arrested the two boys uh, around 10 o'clock, so about an hour afterward. Fun little detail, they were watching Leprechaun on VHS in Damien's trailer. Great movie, dude. Jennifer Aniston. It's a fantastic movie. If it's not her first role, it's one of her very, very first. I think it is her yeah. first, though. It's a good first role, you know. Yeah, it is. It's a good movie. Warwick Davis fucking steals the show, man. Yeah, yeah. That was a great movie. They were arrested for capital murder. Ah! Uh, and when Gitchell uh, was asked during the initial press conference afterward on a Mitch, scale I of... can't believe you did this to them. I yeah, can't Mitch, believe you've what done the this. hell? Mitchell. No, it's Gitchell. Uh, yeah, at the initial press conference, he was just like, uh, or he got asked, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, tell us how strong the case is against these boys. And Gitchell said, 11. <laughs> As they play like the no. who. Like, yeah! Just like some sick guitar riff. Oh, All right. uh, the next day, someone, uh, meaning the police, leaked Jesse's false confession uh, to the entire town. Uh, and, well, the, you know, to the world. But the town specifically, they uh, kind of erupted in rumors and stories, you know, and all that kind of thing. Uh, that seemed to back up their demonization of all the boys. But mostly Damien, as you could probably expect. His name is Damien, son of the devil. What is, what is it? It's all for you, yeah. Damien. All for you, dude. Uh, the movie was great. It was. It was a pretty good one. But uh, and to add insult to injury, Aaron Hutchison, the eight-year-old boy, uh, then confirmed that Damien, Jason, and Jesse were definitely the guys who did it. Oh, yeah. Because he saw them in his fake memory that he was uh, imbued with by a police officer. 
And also, he saw the whole thing happen. <laughs> so Aaron, the eight-year-old kid, is just like, yeah, those are definitely the guys I saw in the woods. Also, I was there when they were being murdered. This guy needs help, man. He's he like, needs good help. Good fucking lord. And he also said they were wearing shirts with dragons on them. Very specific. So that's that's a, the most useful detail, I'd say. Extremely specific. So this kid, this kid is still just making shit up. <laughs> Being led by the same officer that encouraged him to give the false information in the first place. And he's doubling down and adding extra details. All right, So all that's right. like, what the fuck? He, he was there. As they were being murdered. <laughs> How insane is that? For, and no one even talks about this fucking kid. No. Whenever you read about this story, like, no one talks about Aaron Hutchison, the man who, or the fucking kid who just so happened to be there watching it all. Yeah, but, you know, they know he's a kid. He's lying. He's a liar. I know. He's lying about everything. He's just But a all liar. his other lies... Our evidence, apparently. No, no, no. This one, oh, this is so man. much a lie, it's not true. Yeah, yeah. He saw them killing those boys. Well, on June 7th of 1993, the boys, the three boys, you know, they were appointed their public defenders. Because there was no fucking way they could afford a defense team. Any of them. Yeah, yeah. You know? So they got some public defenders. Um, Damien, he got Val Price and Scott Davidson. Ooh. Jason got Paul Ford and Robin Wadley. And Jesse, he got Greg Crow and Dan Stidham. Dan Stidham. My ear just popped. I feel feel weird. It's happening. Okay. Oh, the transformation <laughs> that begins. thing you gave me earlier, what was it? <laughs> it means the transformation begins. Oh, no. Well, all of these lawyers, uh, except for one, uh, pretty much just gave up on their clients after the first hearing. Like, they were just like, we're just going to we're just going to get some money at the end. Like, we're not going to put our thought and time into this. These are fucking Satanists and murderer children. Right, right. That's what they thought. The only one uh, that stayed by their client was Dan Stidham. He was, like, one of Jesse's. Uh, Stidham, he realized pretty quickly that Jesse couldn't tell the same story twice when asked what happened, uh, leading him to suspect that the boy was manipulated by police interrogation. Rightfully so. Spot on, Stidham. Uh, Another reason... He had for believing that this, uh, uh, you know, the fact that Jesse, he um, he didn't even know what a lawyer was. What's that? <laughs> so what does that mean? Jesse thought that his lawyer was another cop. Like, oh he knew God. that lawyers existed. He didn't know what they did, though. So he was like, I'm your lawyer. He's like, so you're a cop, huh? And it's like, no, that's different, different thing. No, I actually help you in this scenario. He's like, no, you're a fucking cop. So that was a little telling story there. Uh, she's like, yeah, I don't think this guy knows what the fuck he's saying or doing. I don't think he knows much at all. I don't think he knows where he fucking is, like, and, geographically. Yeah, so he's he's got to, you know. Oh, <laughs> Jesse also didn't know who Bill Clinton was. Oh, uh, <laughs> you can't expect him. He was the him. president at the time. You can't expect him to know things like who the president is. He and was whatnot. from his state. No, you can't expect that. <laughs> what do you that. mean? No, you can't expect that. doesn't make any sense. Oh, my God. Well, so, yeah, uh, Jesse, oh, good Lord, Jesse, come on. He's not very smart. Um, so another eye, uh, you know, eye-opening exchange that happened between Jesse and Stidham occurred in Jesse's uh, jail cell. While they were discussing the case, all right? So Jesse, just seemingly out of nowhere, he asked who Satin is. Oh. And uh, Stidham was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Jesse produced a pamphlet given to him by a preacher that warned against the dangers of dealing with Satan. Ah, uh, yes. So Jesse didn't even know what the devil was. <laughs> He worshipped him, though. And he's supposed to be a Satanist. He worshipped him, though, dude. He, he knew. No, no. no. <laughs> I love satin sheets, baby. Oh, uh, yes. Luxurious satin. Yeah, so... That's that's a good, uh, you know, uh, characterization of Jesse and where he's at. But it's also Nowhere. a reason that Stidham didn't give up. He was just like, this kid's being fucking ran through the ringer. Anyway, meanwhile, Damien, what do you think he's up to? What do you think uh, he's up to? He's sort of kind of playing with the police there. Yeah. Uh, again, Damien believed in justice. Okay, like that was just something that he believed. He was like, he was positive that he wouldn't go down 
for this in this trial. Uh huh. Like he knew he hadn't done anything wrong, so he just began to occupy himself with some uh, light mischief. Oh, uh-huh. uh, yeah, light so mischief. Some like little little fun time wasters, that kind of thing. Uh, the cops, the uh, you know, they were grilling him for answers. Okay, Damien, that is. So he told them that uh, he would tell them everything he knew about the murders, but only uh, if his mother was there. He would only confess it to his mother. Okay, well, reasonable, right. reasonable. Yeah, it's like a minor, it's like, come on. Well, I think he was 18 at the time. I don't know. Either way, he's living with his mom. So, uh, the police, they set up multiple microphones and cameras in this, this room, right? So it takes a good amount of time setting all this shit up. Brought Damien's mother in, and uh, when they brought him in, sat him down, um, they asked him about the case, and he replied uh, with a simple, nothing. Nothing, man. He didn't know anything. I mean, he knows nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, he wasted all that time. Uh, yeah. Uh, both he and Jason would kind of continue to not take any of this seriously, pretty much the whole time. Uh, they would just like laugh and joke with each other from their cells, and even like goof around in the courtrooms. It's kind of like a shitty thing to do, but they were like smiling and blowing kisses at the victim's families, <laughs> which is like rude, even if you didn't kill their kids. Yeah, that's, that's fucked just up. not good, you know. That's but, next level fucked up. Yeah, y'all wrong. Y'all wrong for that. Yeah, I don't like it. And that probably didn't sit well with the judge, uh, who kind of hated them from the very beginning. Well, uh, Satan, <laughs> they're satinists, dude. They're satinists. Uh, so Judge David Burnett, I think it's Burnett. Yeah, uh, he he didn't appreciate this blatant disrespect in his courtroom. And uh, he was not too keen on the boys to begin with. So Judge Burnett, uh, he apparently read a book on Satanism previously to the trial for, for information purposes. So he was reading up on Satanism. So almost right off the bat, even the judge is going into these hearings saying like, okay, well, these boys are like definitely Satanists, like for sure, no question. The only thing that I have to discern is whether or not they killed these three young boys, which I'm pretty sure he had his mind pretty made up about also. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? He knew, but he's like, well, let's see what the jury has to say. Let's see what you have to say. Uh, Another fun fact about Judge Burnett, uh, he believed that psychiatrists and psychologists had no place in the court of law. Well, he's a bad judge. Therefore... (laughs) Any testimony made by a psychiatrist or a psychologist was all but just a waste of time in the courtroom because he wasn't going to consider it. That or is, consider consenting to have them come in. That is the worst judge yeah. probably dude, ever. Dude, that was it was like the subject of his thesis for like his gre- for like the degree he was getting to become a judge at the time he was being a judge for this case. He was still in the process of getting all his certifications and shit. Good for him, man. He's moving up the ladder I quick. guess, but look at what happened. He is shooting up the <laughs> look ranks. Look at what happened. Oh, God. I, I guarantee he just, like, dated a chick in, like, the psychology department. and was like, I'm never having one of these people in my life again. No, never again. It's not happening. Like anyway, uh, so uh, having a psychiatrist or a psychologist probably would have helped uh, Jesse specifically a lot. In I think hindsight, so. I, I you know, so. in the old courtroom there, uh, you know. All right, so he basically brought down the defense whenever he could and made sure that the boys got locked up. Ah, and, yes, yes, yes. Uh, he also decided that Jesse Miss Kelly was going to have his own trial, while Damien and Jason were to be tried together, which is insanely unfair to Jason. I mean, you know, like <laughs> in hindsight, yeah, it is. It's just. I mean, wrong. it was largely due to the fact that the only evidence that the police had that Jason was involved at all is Jesse's confession. Oh, well, he's a satanist, so you know he's telling okay, the truth. Okay, but like, <laughs> dude, think of all the other like, all by like bullshit evidence, but evidence that they have against Damien, and then that shit, all of that shit is going to be heard during Jason's trial as well. Yeah, see, you're, so, like, you're asking for too much, Jake. You want basic competence in here? It's not happening. Yeah, bro. It's not going to happen. Doesn't I can't fly. even do this show well, but I'm trying. It's like at least try to make sense. No, it doesn't <laughs> fly, know? dude. Not in this courtroom. It does not I fly. It's not. not real. You have to be actively 
unreasonable. Yeah, that's uh, the court. That's the crazy <laughs> court, all right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a food court, but it's just sad, you know? Yeah, it's satin. No. I like these pregnant pauses. We're trying. We're seeing who's uh, who's going to go first. Pregnant, pregnant no. pauses, Mitchell. Look it up. Nah. All right. Uh, you know. So, uh, so uh, what is it? Oh God. Damien and Jason. They're being tried together. How unfair is that? So now he lumped in. He's lumped in with all the stuff. You know, Jason. That is that the supposed ringleader and mastermind behind it all uh, is being accused of. So that's not fair. Um. That is until around a month or so after the initial trials. All right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's like, there's no evidence against him. He's going to be fine. But no, that is until about a month. Um, so after the initial trials, prosecuting attorney John Fogelman, Fogelman, he had a hunch that there just might be some evidence in the lake behind Jason's house. Okay. All right, he's just like, there's a lake back there. I just know there's something in there that's crazy. Um, dredge it. Dredge it now. No, 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 not yet. This apparently was one hell of a hunch, though, because police orchestrated a dive. You know, dive. No dredge. Not as real. Yeah. You're uh, not going to find it. We're not fish. <laughs> all right? We're not meant to do that. Hey, man, just wait. Just wait. This is a crazy-ass hunch because the police, they orchestrated a dive, and they invited a local, like, local media to document the dive. Right. All right, all right. So once under the water, it only took 30 minutes for them to find a huge fucking combat knife oh. just in the in the lake. All right. Very murky water. Uh, which quickly made its way to the front pages of newspapers all across the country. All right. Knife found in lake. First of its kind. Ever. <laughs> Don't ever found knife. a knife in a lake before. <laughs> But th so this is kind of suspicious, right? Like the prosecuting attorney just has this burning feeling that there's something in the lake behind Jason's house, and then he pushes so hard to investigate it that police and news are involved, and then it only takes the diver thirty minutes to sweep and navigate the bottom of a murky lake. Yeah, why would you throw your combat like, knife in the lake? You know. So here we go. All right, guess who? Uh, guess who fucking threw it in there? Uh. Uh, satin. Jason's mother. Uh, ah, yeah. A year and a half previous. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, makes sense. Because, <laughs> you know, Jason probably had it, and she probably found it. She's like, you're not having this fucking thing in the house. She and just, just threw it in the lake. it, dude. I like that. That's fun. Yeah. So, uh, it wasn't a fucking hunch at all, because Jason's mother had told police that she had thrown the knife in there about a year and a half previous to all of this. And they uh -huh. knew... <laughs> that they were going to find the combat knife. And they knew that even though Jason's mother had thrown it in there over a year before, it would be a very damning thing for the case against his uh, against her uh, son there. These are the, those fucking OJ lawyers, so dude. So they're like, it's like they're planting evidence in just things. It, it's a very smart way to plant evidence. It's yeah. like, where are all the knives anything. that you've thrown? Oh, there's one over there. Let's go look over there. Yeah, we found a knife. They didn't break any laws or do anything shady. They just they got the info and did what they had to do and used it. Yeah, that's fucked there you up. Go. It's OJ shit. So yeah, that fucking sucks. Um, and what's worse is the knife exactly matches the description of the weapon used to inflict the violence found on the victims. It was a large knife and it had a serrated edge. Uh huh. All right. All right. All right. But. Uh, you know what? That was from the uh, medical examiner's office, and we'll get into how like wrong they fucking were about pretty much everything uh, next week, because right. that, that's that's where we're gonna come back and do all the crazy court things. Yeah, the court—that's a whole debacle in and of itself. And the aftermath, dude. The aftermath to these dudes being fucking convicted, because that's no secret. We're not giving it away. It was huge. Damn it, Jake! You ruined it. I'm sorry. They. They go to jail. <laughs> you bolstered the whole... No, you already said it earlier. They're satanists, dude. What else are you supposed to do with them? I mean, yeah, you know, you can't put them in like a mattress store somewhere. You That's stick them in a box. Be. Stick um, them in a box. But yeah, it's... They live by a volcano. <laughs> they gotta live by a <laughs> volcano, says Mitch. Mitch says all satanists should live by volcanoes. Oh, that seems fitting. 
That's where it does seem fitting. It's pretty metal. It's I mean, honest though. That's where fucking the devil talks to you from. What do you think? Yeah, it's just a little fucking blub and boil in the in the earth, and you're gonna live next to it, Satanists. I mean, I'm gonna say it. I or know you're gonna be sentenced to prison wrongfully. I know it's. I know years. we're not done with it yet, so th- this will be returned. You know, uh, more next week. We'll talk about this again. Um, but can we talk about just how? This is just so stupid. This whole story is just dumb. Every single thing is made up. Yeah, every situation <laughs> that they find themselves in, it really is just this giant snowball effect of lies and stupidity that have left us in a scenario where we don't know who fucking committed the crime. No, and they pretty much made sure that this case was closed and they could not open it again. Yeah. So the chances of the actual guy... Like, not even considering all the evidence that was fucked up and lost and all the files and shit that they just disregard and, like, don't pay attention to all the things they didn't record. They didn't interview certain people that they definitely should have immediately afterward, speaking of the parents and all that shit. Like, even if all that was intact and, like, you could go back to it, look at it, they can't open this case again yeah, <laughs> so even if they find out who actually killed these boys they can't do anything about it you know the more i'm thinking about it i think that this it really is like the perfect conspiracy i think that somebody knows who did it and they're covering that up i think it was mr bojangles because yeah it could very well it was be. the fucking bleeding man who just like ran in like that night to a Bojangles bathroom, disappeared, and what do you know, the police lost his blood. It's so strange. It's, I mean, I know that the, the satanic panic was a big situation and people really wanted some form of persecution for individuals that they thought were Satanists, but the fact that these people went so far above and beyond to not investigate the crime... It, it it smells of conspiracy. It does right? smell of conspiracy. Also, just let God sort them out. Sort of. I mean, you know, Satanism like, is... whether no If you believe no laws, in Satanism, Mitch that is a bad thing. If you believe that, you know, the devil is evil and he's going to get you, you see a Satanist and you're terrified of him, but it's, the, it's not really your problem, you know? It's just not your problem. It's like, no, he killed those boys. It's like, how do you know that? There is zero evidence linking any of the any of the boys to the crime other than general geography and lies spewed by other people. It's just like, this kid's fucking goth and poor and moody. Yeah. So <laughs> let's fucking kill him. It's so backwards, <laughs> man. Like, it like, doesn't make any fuck? sense. No one it's ever... It, I, I, I can't tell you if I know of a more incompetent case out there we're than dealing with, I know of. <laughs> we're dealing with the statements of a priest, obviously going to hate some fucking Satanists. Obviously. A, he, a his lush job mother, is to hate it. That's his deal. <laughs> a fucking... Satanist. None of them are even Satanists. A, a fucking lush mother who, like, drinks two bottles of whiskey. Where was Aaron at that point? No one knows. Also... Aaron, her fucking son, is just spewing out just lies. And then this fucking kid with a third grade mentality, who's Jesse, like 17 years old, they're, he's just like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah, I'm going to try to go home. I'm going to say whatever you want me to say. God. It's just nothing. There's just nothing there. No, it's weird. This whole fucking and thing they went to reeks. Prison. It just reeks of many things. Incompetence, conspiracy, all around, just negligence, I guess. That's a good word to say. Just horrible, horrible all around. It's so yeah. stupid. It's almost infuriating. Like, hearing almost. this, talking about this, it's so dumb because... And I'm not I'm not putting the blame on, you know, the individuals in question here. But, like, let's call it what it is. Damien and Jason really could have done better jobs at, you know backing themselves up in this well it was mainly damien because like jason was just his friend and it's like he's joking around with him he's like all right i'm nervous i'll just kind of joke around with you i guess i'm sorry dude dude. Dude, i'm a nervous kind of guy but if mitch was doing some dumb shit that was putting us all in jeopardy i would absolutely talk to him and just say you're a fucking moron what the fuck are you doing Get this shit together, or I'm I'm no, telling no, them what my no. story. You don't understand. Damien had faith in justice, 
And strangely enough, ironically enough, Jason had faith in God <laughs> that this wouldn't happen. That's exactly what he said. He was like, I had faith in God that uh, he wouldn't allow this to happen. Yeah. But these people lo and behold. I'm not know, saying like, that God. they deserve it. They don't they do not deserve it, but they did not help their case at all. They just made they it worse. They didn't think they needed to because they didn't do anything. <laughs> See, but that's the air. You have to. Just because you didn't do it, once the joke is over when you spend the night in jail and you're actually in a courtroom discussing this shit, regardless of how stupid it sounds, the joke is over. It's not funny anymore. It's getting real. These you kids know? don't fucking know anything, dude. They're just trying to get through life. They're living in dirt shacks and trailers. They're, just thinking of- They're not getting parented very well. They're getting their asses kicked at home. And like, like where do you expect them to learn common sense? I would just hope. I just hope. It was the nineties, Mitch says. And that's what no I internet. It's no a, internet. It's definitely important to say, like I'm I'm not saying that this is Some their internet. fault. Because it's not their fault. They they did nothing. They were just the wrong people. But maybe I am giving too much credit to the human race. You gotta I'm sorry, but faith in God if human you're in a bad spot bad. and all you have is your faith in God that it will end. And it's not ending. It's just getting more and more severe. You need to change what you're doing. No, it's God's plan. And no. They always, say, they always say God helps those who help themselves. God helps those who help themselves, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the most Catholic shit I've ever fucking heard. Well, that guy needed it. <laughs> if you do the work of God, but don't say you're God, make sure you don't say you're God. If you do the work for God, God will be happy and not do anything. If that isn't the most like, Roman oh, Catholic excellent. fucking shit I've ever heard. Excellent you know news. you know what my God does? My God wants you to do it yourself. Fuck you. What's the point of God then? What's the point? What's the, what's it's he like here he for? made you so you could have all these fucking troubles and trials and tribulations no. and uh this shit's stupid. get in trouble for things you didn't know and just like, you know. Don't talk shit about him though. No, you can't. Don't talk shit about God. You can't. You can't no, do that. No. Well, I think... Also, Satan's like the worst, though. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what they did. Maybe that's oh, what God. they did. They pissed off God, maybe. They says. made him upset. I don't... I think we discussed Whatever. it. This is... Uh, we got one more part to this, correct? Maybe two? Maybe just one? I don't yeah. know. Um, but there there will be the conclusion coming your way soon. I wonder why people don't, you know, like, trust the God. It's simple. Why, this why don't shit. people trust the cop? This story is, means nothing to that timeline. It's simple, Dan. Kill the Batman. It's yeah. that simple. <laughs> yeah. You want to think they got your best interest in mind, and they're not <laughs> trying to put you in prison for, no. No, for nothing. <laughs> they don't give a fuck, <laughs> That's man. That's fucking crazy. And it's not everywhere. It's not everyone, but in a lot of but instances. But it is some places sometimes, and that's still too much, I'd say. Uh, we've gone too far as a society with the idea of setting an example. We set so many examples that it's just become the norm, and it's just bad. Nothing's good, that's for sure. No laws. No laws, Mitch says. Well... Uh, I think, yeah, that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, we'll come back yeah. next week for the conclusion. Ah, uh, the conclusion. Even though we tale. all kind of know the general conclusion, we're just going to fucking talk about it. Yeah, right? we'll tell you how we get there. You know? Yeah, yeah, we'll show you next week. But I love you guys. It's true. I hope you have a good one. We are rapidly approaching um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah. We are rapidly approaching Thanksgiving, so... I don't know. I, I'm looking into something that would be Thanksgiving-ish themed that isn't just a massacre of Native Americans. I was going to say, um, we could do a massacre of Native Americans. We've done that before. That's the it's, most Thanksgiving thing. It is what it, it is. It fits the best. I want to find something. I'm working on it, but we'll... Uh, we should, Hopefully we could do like then. just a, an episode on smallpox blankets. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, fun. yeah. Mitch was about to say it. Smallpox <laughs> blankets. AIDS, Snickers bars, all the good shit. Is this a know? weighted blanket? It's like, no, it's uh, sept and bleach. Yeah, you're like, dying. Whoa. You're dying. But... Why is it so damn? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Smallpox are wet. <laughs> it's a bunch of bleach uh, diseases, and I also peed in there a little bit. Uh, but... Give me your land. <laughs> with all that being said, good that's Lord. effectively our episode for the week. We destroyed the native people of this. Yeah. We hey, decimated it, their people. Yeah, but we'll... <laughs> But we'll be back next week. Stop decimating um, Native Americans. Yeah, I mean, don't do that. Come on. Uh, yeah, that's Grant. I'm Jake. Mitch was here. We are starting a cult. You can follow us on all the shit. There's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
We're also on uh, TikTok, uh, Wasak underscore pod. There's an email, start a cult at gmail.com. There's a link below for the Patreon. Yeah. That's awesome. And then also we're on YouTube. West Memphis 3, that'll be it. All right, see you later.